counting on the courts to eradicate racial inequity. That's madness. Coleman Domingo's performance in Rustin is captivating audiences. I'm the one that's been preaching passive resistance. Domingo brings to life the story of unsung civil rights hero Bayard Rustin. The actor, celebrated for his roles in Euphoria. You think you're tough? I'm tougher. And The Color Purple. Don't you move a muscle. Now Oscar nominated for Best Actor in the biopic. There were many years where people said if there was a Bayard Rustin biopic, you should play him. Yeah, it's, I feel like that there has always been sort of a secret society of people who knew about Bayard Rustin. When this opportunity came at 51 years old, when Bayard was 51 years old when he organized a march in Washington, that I had a, a lot of what I needed to do this film. In terms of life experience? Life experience, leadership skills. I knew I had, I've stored up a lot that I needed. Rustin was a critical force behind the 1963 March on Washington, where around 250,000 people gathered. The organizer seen here behind Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Anything you learn about him surprise you, Rustin? There's so much that surprised me about him. I, I was surprised at his um, candor and his wit and how he used language as his weapon. He could use his mind and his sharp wit like no one else. No one can deny his intelligence. No one can deny his organizational skills. And that's what he used in every single room that he was in. The first demand is that we have effective civil rights legislation, no compromise, no filibuster, and that it includes public accommodation, decent housing, integrated education, FEPC, and the right to vote. The activism came at a pivotal time in history. Just months before, young black activists were hosed by police in Birmingham, Alabama. Raised by his grandparents, Rustin studied the nonviolent principles of Gandhi and is credited with introducing nonviolence to King, later becoming one of his closest advisors. Rustin working alongside the likes of A. Philip Randolph, Ella Baker, and John Lewis. There can be a desire to present this kumbaya sentiment when it comes to the civil rights movement. Yet the film is not shy about showing some serious divisions in the movement. Why was that important to do? I think it's important because it's extremely human. And it really shows that these were people with ideas and they had different ways of doing it. It took a queer, black, Quaker from Westchester, Pennsylvania, to organize the March in Washington, form coalitions, and galvanize this incredible, nonviolent, peaceful protest, the largest that this country has ever seen. That's maybe what struck me the most. It seems if Rustin wasn't there, we may have never even had a civil rights act, let alone a March on Washington. Barack Obama said, if there was no by Rustin, there would be no Barack Obama. Mm. He had the most strategic mind, the way he was able to think outside the box and the way he invited other young people in particular to do the same thing because they weren't rigid in their thinking, that we can actually do this thing together. We are going to put together the largest peaceful protest in the history of this nation. Many believe Rustin's work was nearly written out of history because he was openly gay. On the day that I was born black, I was also born a homosexual. This film also sticks out in that Rustin is not presented as this one-dimensional person who just worked for the country, for civil rights, but we also got to see romance and love. Why was that important to convey, especially for a black gay man? Because I think it would be easy to just, you know, talk about his thoughts and ideas and not give you the whole human being. The fact that he was trying to navigate love, romance, sex, at a time when, when his could be violated in every single way. Rustin remained committed to the cause. He died in 1987. President Barack Obama, an executive producer of the film, posthumously awarding Rustin the Medal of Freedom in 2013. Domingo says now is the time for Rustin's story to be told. The actor saying three decades of experience prepared him for this role. How did it feel getting news of that Oscar nom? I was literally talking to a friend of mine about this in the car. There has been a great work ethic, and yet nothing was promised to me. I had many opportunities to own my power. I keep going back to Rustin, to own my power in many ways. And so by the time this Oscar nomination came, I know that, yes, I'm filled with gratitude. I'm filled with such, um, to be in this company, to be with these people I admire, 
Um, I'm a part of the academy. I've taken leadership roles in the academy, really trying to make things more um, equitable and diverse. And I, because I see the power of and the influence of what cinema is. So to be a part of this sort of class um, means everything. Um, and to be seen by my peers is wonderful. But I also know that it's been a lot of hard work. And it's, I know that there's a lot of love and support behind me. And I feel like I see all my comrades um, who do this work, who are just as talented, who may not have had the opportunity, but I know that they're so happy for me. But also think because they're happy for themselves too, that, that we're doing it. You know, they, we're reflections of each other. And, and, I, and for me, I think that's the greatest part of this whole moment is to remind people to stay in there, do the work, have faith that you have stories to tell, tell it where you can, and be dedicated to the work. And sometimes, once in a while, all the lights will shine on you. And when it does, you know how to share and bask in the light, but also be generous with it as well. What do you think his legacy is in this country? Bayer Rustin was somebody who devoted his entire life to civil and human rights. Since he was a teenager, it was already in him what he staged protests for food, better food or better treatment. I think the legacy of Bayer Rustin invites us all to take part in righting the wrongs of systems and not writing it with a, a sense of anger or hostility, but really doing the thing that Bayard would do, which was he was a star athlete when he was in high school. And apparently he used to, when he, when he would tackle somebody, he would help them up and then he would recite poetry to them. That he was a fun-loving human being who was curious about other people, who was a man of the world, taking ideas from Gandhi and from the Bible and you name it, whoever had a great idea, and putting them all together. Because I believe, I think what he was honestly trying to do is really move through this country and help each other love each other, help each other love each other a bit more. I think that's his legacy. These people weren't superheroes. They were just doing what was in front of them. You know, they were ordinary human beings doing things that were extraordinary. And that what a great message to say that you can take part and you can own your power. That's what we have as a tagline for the film. You can own your power. We're inviting people to own their power. What a beautiful message that we all need right now. And not, and again, owning your power is not a thing of like saying I must suppress someone else. It's saying, no, I own my power. I want you to own your power. When we own our power together, we all win. What do you say? Zinclair Samoa, NBC News, New York. Nightly Films is sponsored by Pfizer. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.